guys? It's Acrylic Monday, and guess what? It's a premiere. Oh, I wow. love premieres. This, what's what's the premiere so since I don't understand I thought we were doing a live show well kind of live it's like, a, it's like a 50 50 right <laughs> um we're still alive presumably when we air this right and you'll you can see us in the chat we'll be able to chat with you but also we got some questions ahead of time that we'll be answering during the show and this has been pre-recorded so uh, I, I think it's going to be a lot of fun in continuation with what we did last week in our premiere. We're going to stay along the same genre. I'm going to show you. We're going to do a, a an old mill and old building and a little lake. It's going to, it's a really pretty one, and I think it goes with the painting we did last week of uh, John and I walking in the woods, or perhaps you painted it with yourselves or somebody you know walking in the woods. But anyway, last week we did that. We'll talk a little bit about that. And this week we're going to be continuing on with the same nine by twelve canvas and in the same colors that we did last week using the Salvador paint sets. Okay. Now, since we'll be home, uh, you know, Soon, to, to do a, we'll be available for a live show the following week, which is next Monday, then we're going to go ahead and have a drawing. We're going to go have a contest tonight for a drawing of uh, Salvador paints and uh, maybe a downloadable lesson. So um, we'll, we'll keep you posted during the show as we think it up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, John, take us down to the take I'm us down, to our, down the table. All right, so this is a, I found a photo and I went ahead and I digitally worked on it in my painter series to get the colors I wanted. But I still want to do a vignette like we did last week. Can so you I'm, pop up, why don't you just pop up last week real quick? I'm going to show you last week we did, we did um, this, you know, the couple in, this in the woods. This adorable painting. A, adorable painting of this adorable couple. <laughs> Don't know who that is, yeah. but we also told you how you could take a regular scene and just plop somebody in it if you do it right. And we so that was last week's lesson. But we thought that this could go very nicely because it's similar colors and it's in the fall. It could be very pretty. And by the way, um, uh, th this is really fun to do. So um, anyway, not yeah. that they all are massively of masses of fun. <laughs> so I just have a beige background here. Here's my um similar what we did last time. Just like what we did last time, except and, and we could sketch this on. I know we could, but you know what? This is a lather complicated painting in the sense that there's a lot of detail in here. So I don't want to take up a lot of time uh, you know, freehanding it on. So I'm just gonna tape it down like this. Now remember, when you, the traceables will be available on our Oh, acrylic painting with Ginger Cook for our basic supporters and up. And we thank you again because of our basic supporters and Academy members. But, but, you know, all our Academy members from basic supporters and up um, have, have access to the um, to our traceable <laughs> lessons and the resources. You'll even probably see the real photograph we have of this. So maybe you would do it differently than I did. But anyway, this is what we've got. And of course, uh, red members um, and and uh, red, blue, purple, and red, blue, purple members. Well, the the just the red, the purple members would get this. Yes. Well, there's water. No, it's got water in it. I'm gonna give it to everybody. Well, they was well, it YouTube? They, they everybody get it gets because it. Everybody gets it's it. So it's YouTube. Hello. Hello. What is this? No, is, this, is this your first day here? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes and yes. Yeah, this is for yellows and above. Yellows and above, right? So yellow and above. You. Orange. So the only people it doesn't count for are who, John? The green. The green. If you're a green member, you'd like to be, you'd be able to get access to the traceables. What we would love you to do is to just uh, sign up for the four ninety five a month, and you know you can do it for a while. But you know you're not, we don't hold your hand in the fire, but it gives you everything, all the traceables, not just for one traceable. You guys, it gives you everything from twenty twenty and up. Twenty one. Yeah, 20, 20, 21 and up. Where are you 21? No, last year. We gave that last year was 2020, and we had traceables available then. Oh, yeah, but they're not on the new site. Aren't they? No. We started this year. I thought you moved everything over from the old site. You did? I thought we were talking about YouTube. If you're talking YouTube stuff, that was just 21. No, no, it isn't. We started in today. Okay, then everything's over there. Everything's over there. <laughs> I just... You know, I'm, I'm working 24 hours a day. You expect me to remember this? Stuff? No, I just think that we all have like COVID, COVID <laughs> calendars. There's so many months went by. What day is it? 
where's my cell phone? Is it charged? Do I get, what's my last name? Tell me again, kind of thing, right? How long have I been here? How long have I been here? It seems like forever. I need a drink, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's, we sort of had this COVID brain going. We're, we're trying to get out, slowly get out of that. Um, good luck with that. So let, let me just see if this trace is on. You know, it doesn't, John. This is too light. It's just not going to do it. I need a, um, they're going to have to pause this a minute and we'll just uh, edit this out yeah. and get me actually a piece of, you know, a dark traceable. Maybe it's like, do we have like a gray or something? I don't think they make it. We have a black. That's fine. Whatever it is, something darker. Well, I don't know. I have to see what we got. Well, we, there's probably one we never, ever, hardly ever use, but in this case, we're going to use it. So we can't say we're not hardly ever use it now. So we're going to use it. Well, actually, I probably could have, if I was just going to do the, yeah, no, I just want the whole thing, because how people are, they like the whole, see the whole thing. The whole cake, caboodle. Well, that's what they say, right? The enchilada. Yeah, the enchilada. All right, what do we got back here in the resource center? Uh, I got white, white. I got a blue. Nice big sheet of blue, it'll work. I got a huge big sheet. Okay. 12 by 18 blue, so I'm big blue. Didn't you, in the packet, we always get a gray. We never use them. I know, them. but you're, you're thinking I can find the packet. Somebody opened the packet and they disrupted um, the packet. Uh -huh. And I'm not mentioning names. Well, it's a good thing not to mention names because you wouldn't want to be mentioning names now, would you? No. Like, how about red? Um, Come on. Okay. I got red. All right. We can do red, I think. Yeah, we can do red. Yeah, red one. Red one see what it does. See what works before I get in the command center again. Find the red. Find the red. Let's see, like, like so. Yeah, red will work. Well, I said red will work. Well, well, I know some stuff, yeah. Yeah, I know a lot of stuff. I'm okay, don't worry, I'm fine. Don't worry, <laughs> I'm good. I wonder where my, all my triangles go. Do you know where they go? Do they go to triangle heaven? I mean, what happens to triangles? <laughs> they go to triangle heaven. That's a, they, okay, all right, fine. So you got all those new ones too, where'd you put them? Well, we bought some new ones, where are they? Oh, <laughs> I'm in here now. Well, where do you think that we put the triangles? They're probably over, still over here in the bag. You didn't unpack the bag? <sighs> What kind of unpacker are you? You didn't unpack about all those new triangles. I'm, a, I'm an unpacker to get back to work. Uh, <laughs> which means he didn't unpack anything. That's what it means here. I'll give you these and you promise not to get paint on them. Getting paint on them. They're my triangles. I can get whatever paint on them. <laughs> Should we show the, the, the package? Uh, it's a triangle, people. Uh, well, we should show the package, right? <laughs> These are art triangles. All right. You you <laughs> These are them here is art, <laughs> art triangles as opposed to non art. I don't know. Cooking triangles, <laughs> art triangles. Do you, don't use these in the kitchen. No, 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 no. no. Do not use for bacon, only for art. <laughs> not safe with food. Not for baking. Not for baking. All no right, baking. Art triangles. All right, here they are. These are brand new. We got these in at, at Jerry's Art of Rama and everything. In North Carolina. North Carolina. Went all the way to Art Carolina to get them. Yeah? Absolutely. We're just going to go ahead and um, just very fast and just swift and easy. Um, Lickety split, as they and say. And here's a note for you know who you are. <laughs> this is not going to be a 40 by 40 picture. And we know who we're talking to, so don't we? We know who we're talking to, don't we? And I don't care that you have this 40 by 40 canvas. You have no clue what to do with. This will not, read my lips, this will not work for you. Okay? Boy. Yeah, well, I felt compelled to say that. We have this whole issue with the ratio thing where people go, I've got this spare canvas. It's not anything what Ginger did, but it's a canvas, and that's, you know, it fits the bill. It's a canvas. Yeah, good. 
Just that, that's like going to the grocery store taking somebody's kids home because they look like a kid, <laughs> not your kid, but just miscellaneous kid. You need the right stuff. You need the right kid. You need the right kid, you know, and you need the right canvas. Now, look at the top of this water wheel here. It's going to be down here at the bottom, but it, it goes straight across and then down, and you've got this kind of um, upside-down horseshoe shape here. This is important stuff. Now, let's see. How are we tracing on? Yeah, it's kind of working. And I think it goes clear back here like this. Maybe it does this. There you go. Clear back here and then down. Okay, so then here's our our wall and our bank. And um, we've got a bank coming along like this. It's not even bank. either, so keep in mind it's not even. We got something back here. And we got a pretty good tree here, just so I know where it goes. Um don't think I need any of that, but we'll just put this here anyway. We've got um we're not gonna put the fence back there. We're gonna show the the pond, and I'm gonna go ahead and put the fence posts in uh, for the most part after um after I put in the lake or the pond or whatever this is. So it's not really, lake is too big a word for this. And the tree will go on the outside. I'm not gonna put that in. Here's our kind of path going up to there, all right? So this is doing this back here. All this is trees. This is doing this. And that, my dear friends, is all you get for your quarter. It's just what you get for your, your dime for your buck here. I really wish this would, um, Show up more on the water wheel. I can see it, but it's sometimes when you're doing this, you got to go over the line several times, or you don't see it. Again, this is the bush, so you're not going to see anything over here. All right, so we're going to just hope we have enough of a reference to to, to for that. Yes and yes. So while I'm getting ready to paint, John, any questions for me? Oh, absolutely, my queen does. Because we ask people questions. Questions have been coming questions. in all day long. Okay, yeah. But this is a great question. Why does every artist, from Bob Ross to Ginger Cook to everybody else on YouTube, always paint pine trees with the branches slanted downward when most pines have branches that grow straight out or upward. I can understand when they weighted down with snow. This is from John Callahan, and I believe he is in Ireland. Yeah, John, this is a really good question. I think I answered a little bit to you when you wrote that in, but I wanted it to go on the show too, because- We wanna make it public. Because, I, because here's the deal. <laughs> we all learned how to, to write and draw when we were kids. That's what we all learned. So as soon as I can get this tape off, the silly, I can, getting annoyed now. Nothing's already? coming off. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fighting with the tape again, well, wait, right? 10 minutes into the show, you're already annoyed yeah. with it? <laughs> no, I'm annoyed with the tape now. I mean, what, there, come on. Really? Honestly. This is just going to, you're going to do that on me? All right, never mind. Here, all right, let's put this red paper away. I think blue would have been better just saying cupcake. I offered blue. No, I don't remember it's blue. <laughs> okay, I, I have a recording of the whole conversation. <laughs> I can't Listen, rewind it, you know. I'm one of those people that doesn't need important facts. I just have a belief and stick to it. <laughs> I have no memory of that. <laughs> just the important stuff that counts. I yeah, see. okay, so what I've got to do now before it gets too too scary is a... Uh, is, um, because you guys, none of us, nobody can see that. I can see it. Well, you know what? I can't. <laughs> and I've got you glasses. Want me to it for you? I've got glasses and I'm not seeing it. So. Okay, so what about John's question? What about All the right, well, John, trees? I'm going to tell you, here's the deal. We all learned to do, 
to write when we were in grade school. Yes. And the thing of it is, is that chances are the way you wrote and learned the alphabet is the way you still do it today. Handwriting analysis is, uh, can take, you know, some very interesting um, uh, uh, samples of your handwriting and determine personality. And it's funny to me because it's really, that's almost depressing because that means that you haven't changed since you were like five, six. But nonetheless, this is what they know. So um, here is, I'm going to use the, here is the, here is the, the letter A, okay? Yes, everybody sees that. Can you see you can zoom in on that, John? Here's the letter A. This is, all right, that's how I've been writing the letter A forever. When I was five, I wrote, did a pine tree like this? Because that's what they showed us how to do, which all the branches going down. That's how people do it. People today still paint pine trees like that because their mind just reverts because this is cloning. You're, you have a tendency, whatever your last thing your mind learned was, um, that's what it makes. And if you decide this is a rock, it's going to make the same rock over and over again, see? Which is um, maybe Funny. okay for bricks, but not so great for rocks or clouds. And you can see this. Even if you go back to the old masters, everything will be perfect and all the clouds will be identical like they stamped them, the shapes. And so this is one of the uh, veins of artistry is to not clone your stuff. So on the other hand, if you came up and decided, all right, here's my pine tree, right? And this is the last pine tree you learned to do. And probably most of us, when we were younger, watched Bob Ross, and he was the one that started this or that other guy, right? This is how we do pine trees. Yes? Now, we understand that there's a lot of different kinds of pine trees, but this is the fallback pine tree. That's the one everybody does. That's why. The old fallback. And if, so, you know, if you wanted to be one be of those the, uh, artists Western. to be original, why don't you Google some pictures? of pine trees and try doing different ones and see how hard it is because it still wants to do that one. It wanted to do this one. Once we broke you of that habit, now it wants to do this one. Once we taught you how to do that, then it, that's the one it wants to do. And so that's pretty much the fallback. Most of us were, um, were follow, you know, probably followed Bob Ross and that's what he did. And that's what we're, we did, right? Even though we no longer paint like that or anything, uh, that's what we do. That's what we do. There's a 13 common, most common North American pine species. This will, this will let you know. 13 varieties. Common um, ones. Then, then people could Google that then, right? Yes. I just I went into Google Images and typed in pine trees, and they're all kinds. You have some up, some down, some left, some right. Just like John said, they're all over the place. And he's right. But that's what people, but there's a tendency to, to um, do what we've always done. Do what you, you just, you make it in your mind. Um, that's why we tell people to use references um, use whenever possible, Google. whenever possible to use references because, um, I mean, that's key. Now, the uh, the palette we're using today, now that we've finished with the marvelous triangles, look at that thing. And no paints on it yet. I'm These so are, impressed. Uh, from Jerry's Artorama. And there's our packaging. Um, Just so you know, it's real. Real, real art. They're called art triangles from alt alternatives. Okay. Art, art alternatives. Interesting. Yeah. Just, you know, that, that, that means that they're gender free triangles. <laughs> like if you were French, you couldn't call it a female triangle or male <laughs> triangle. That would just be the triangle. Which I never understood the language yeah. that they give. So if you're French or Spanish, you cannot give it a gender. No, to them no gender. Because these are alternatives triangles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new breed of triangles. So I'm sorry. In fact, you have to be careful. You can't. Sometimes you can't even imply that it might be one or the other. No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. There's none of this male. Of this. In fact, they're going to have to change the language. And I'm telling you what, they'll all fall do a fallback like English because there will no more be a female table and a male chair and whatever. Right. right. That's got to go with the new <laughs> with the new thinking here. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. I'm telling you what, because uh, you'll look out. If you don't change it, there'll be protests. You watch. My word. Give it another 10 years, and, you know, it'll be uh, you peel that gender, up it'll be gender neutral. There you go. Will be insisted upon. All right. So this, oh, it just dropped a brush on the floor. God, I didn't need it. Um, it was over <laughs> Gee, there. Gee, I hope somebody will clean that up later. Yeah, I'd be lucky, right? <laughs> so I, I'm going to start, like, any um, background. We're going to start with the background on this. And I want sort of a sort of a light uh, beige uh, background with a little bit of blue in it to so take a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue, blue, ultramarine blue 
titanium white and a little raw umber. Then let's uh, put that on something and kind of see what we got. Just kind of let's just put it on here and see what I got. Just I want something kind of like that, a little more blue in it. We are okay. primarily using the Salvador paints, right, boss? Yeah, primarily Salvador paints is our primary paint. I'm gonna put a little of this lighter blue in it. There we go. Oh, oh, I like that color. That's nice, right? So we're gonna come up here like this and say that this is our kind of a blue um, gray. Kind of a blue gray day up here, and we're gonna add that to our um guy. And um uh come on down here, and I'm taking a little of the sink white, and I want I just you could it never hurts to alternate colors. Just uh, maybe like something like this. I believe another saying that's famous is there's always more than one color. Who said that? I believe it was you, my queen. Oh, then it must be. Well, write that down. <laughs> that's that's got to be fact right there. <laughs> Hello. You remember that from a uh, deputy dog? You say so, I say so, and must be so. <laughs> Wasn't that deputy dog? I don't believe it was deputy dog. You say so, I say so, and must be so. That's more like Morticia would say that, the way you're saying it. Oh, yeah, maybe so. <laughs> Could have been moose and squirrel. Moose and squirrel. Moose and squirrel and Morticia. From what was that show? I should know that. Well, all right. You know, okay, let's just let's just squish that in there. Another technical term, squish. Let's just squish. We well, squish, that's we a, squish. It, it, it. What was the other one we had? Oh, man. I have to go back and watch the show again. Which show is that? Yeah, the last show we had Smush and something else. Now we have Squish. Okay. All right, let's take some of the same nifty color. Yes? Okay, same nifty color. And let's just uh, paint in our pond here. Because we know it's here. We do. As opposed to over there. Well, no, it's actually not here. It's somewhere else, but, you know. It's, there. Here, this, it's let's, close enough to be here. We're going to just uh, paint this in here like this. Even though it has other colors, we will keep our brush strokes kind of level to the top and bottom of the canvas. And Most will, people might refer to that as horizontal. Do they? Yeah. That's so cool. I love it. I love it. He knows things, don't you? So reassuring. You'll remember stuff. Keep it up, baby. It's good to know, good to know things. And I'm glad, I'm glad that you can, you can share these things. I'm just trying to show you that I pay attention. Oh. Okay. So I'm going to say, come up here like that. A little bit of little, little, little streaks here. And I've got a little bit more. Uh, there we go. So even a little purple in there. That's pretty. All right, so how do we make this background on just uh, white with the burnt sienna, right? Yeah. Okay, so then um, what do we have? What do we know for sure? Well, we know we have a little bit of a, there's a light, like back up here, there's this light road back. Let's see, it's actually up here. There's this light road behind the house. Okay, so we have a little bit of this color up in here too in the woods. I'm just going to sneak that up there. There you go. It's sneaking because, you know, we're not going to let it see it coming. There you go. All right, so while that's drying, let's take some uh, burnt burnt um, umber. Oh, that's raw umber. Let's take some burnt umber and do this on the, the roof of this building here. You can do so. The angle brush I'm using is a 5 8 inch uh, angle brush. That would be the um, new Bristol on series. New Bristol on ones, which is a little bit stiffer. Well, it's a lot stiffer than the ruby satin to become. Well, try not to keep the roofs. Don't let the roofs get too sway back on you. You know, it's. A, I know the building's old, but there we go. It's a little bit sway back in there. Okay, so there's that. And now let's see what else do we know. Well, we know this is all dark in here. So let's take some. Let's make that our darkest colors. Put some burnt umber and ultramarine blue in this one and say that this is real dark right here around our wheel. Okay. And on the inside of our wheel, we can do that too.
probably should use a smaller brush, but now, now I'm involved as opposed to not being involved. Okay, so, and then we know it's kind of dark under here like this. Okay, so far so good, you guys are with me. All right, we're gonna come up here like that and say that's the end of our building goes all out a little bit past um, the side here. Okay. So then what I'm missing is burnt sienna. We used all that up, so let's pour, pour that out. We're using the Salvador, that's number three zero zero. What no, what what do they call it? Burnt sienna. Well. There you go. There's no doubt. Yeah, see, to, yeah, that's what they called it, burnt sienna. And it's a little, it's a reddish brown, okay? I'm gonna put a little bit of burnt sienna and zinc white together. And um, with this one a little bit lighter. You know, when you're doing buildings, there's got to be a dark and a light side to them, you guys. Um, I've seen people do buildings, and they make both sides the same color and same value. Make the habit of taking a black and white photo of your pictures and your reference as you go along. That's very important. I'm going to make this a little bit wider here. Okay. There we go. Just dry brush some color in there. Okay. There we go. So just sort of, you know, that's the kind of, we're locking that in. Yes and yes. So, um, well, what else could we do? Well, we can lock it in here too. Let's take some of this dark burnt sienna color and put that down here in the corner. You know, just kind of, you know, one of the things you can ask yourself is, you write this down, what do I know for sure? Um, you know, that is a very important question. What do I know for sure? And then paint that. You know, as you're painting along, you know, here's a little bit of this, uh, this uh, zinc, zinc white, you see there like that. I know that there's a, like kind of, kind of some streaky stuff in this like that. There we go. I know that for sure. But that's going like that. All right. So now what? Okay. So the next thing we want to do is this these background trees. But what I want to do is dry this for a minute. Really dry this roof and everything before I get too much further along. But before I do that, let me just take some yellow oxide and paint this hillside in. Is that I can do without interfering with anything. I can kind of do, I can block in a bit of an underpainting like that, okay? And um, then I can block in this a little bit too. Put a little bit of red with that. And some of so this kind of gold color, yellow oxide color. There we go. That's pretty, isn't it? Not quite burnt sienna, but got a little bit more of a, um, a little more depth to the color, block that in. I think that this goes out beyond the fence here too. I can put that in, yeah. And then as long as I'm doing that, I'm gonna take some red and a little bit of that same gold color. And I'm gonna come along here like that. And I'm gonna paint this red here, kind of red and gold. That's just a little bit of red and a little bit of yellow oxide. And um, we're just going to paint this bank in. You can do that very simply. All right, you guys, don't sweat the small stuff. It's pretty, pretty simple, All right? And um, I think we even have some bank coming around this way. Um, I think I'll bring some of that bank down this way a little bit. I think this curved a little bit and did something like this. We have a tree here, so let's 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 just say it did that. 
And then there's our dark red where the bank is. Okay. We'll put a little bit more of that red color on here on this edge. While this is still wet, you see how it all sort of blends in kind of real pretty and just you don't have any hard lines. You know, you can kind of avoid those. Okay, so far so good, yes and yes. Now let's take a little bit of burnt sienna and uh, let's darken some of this up here on the bank in a few places. Kind of add some shadows to it. Any questions, John, while I'm doing that? Absolutely. I've got one from Joan. Yeah. My question is, do you ever miss living in the Pacific Northwest, especially on the rainy weather and clean air days? <laughs> well, you know, I really enjoyed my childhood there, though at the time I felt I was being punished. Because <laughs> all I watched on TV was Hopalong Cassidy and the Lone Ranger, and I'd have my pony and I'd try to pretend to be all those things and get out there and play. And um, there was Mount Rainier and the lake and all this greenery. It didn't look anything like Palm Springs or the desert. I'm thinking, I really, how did I get saddled with this place? You know, why was I born? <laughs> here when I could have been born in that neat place, right? So um, to answer your question, uh, I don't miss it, but I love going up there. And I, my ideal thing would be to spend a month on in uh, San Juan Island, say up on in Victoria, you know, stay up there for a month. It's so gorgeous. I'm going to dry this now, John. I believe that's where we're in Canada, eh? Yeah. Ah. Just up from Seattle. All right, here we go. I'm going to dry this and be right back. When you're ready to take your art to the next level, we offer personal art coaching at acrylicpaintingwithgingercook.com. This would be your opportunity to really find your artistic voice. Let's take a quick example of one of our students who sent in their painting for evaluation. Mr. Cook, um, I love that you did all the research on the fish. I think that's great. And I like, I think your trout are very good. Um, I like them a lot. I think you did a very nice job on these, um, painting them. And I thought your reference photos were excellent. Okay. For instance, if I go back over here to your page and look at some of the references, um, I would work on the eyes a little bit more. I think um, if you look at the eyes on this fish, um, I would work on on uh, on that. Let me just show you this um, here. You're going to a lot of trouble to get them very realistic. I think you need to just glaze over some of those eyes. You see that? I just I would do that a little bit. I'd work on those eyes a little more, the shading on top of the head. I think you could have a little more with that, just um, just just as an observation when I look at that. It's sort of fun to look at your reference photos because um, if you think about it, the, the lights, there might, we might just play a little bit more with that because you've got, you've got some great reference photos. Let me just start with yours here. All right. Um, and I like this one too. I think it's nice. Um, I like the light that's on top and then on the water. So that being said, um, I think I'd come over here and just do a little glazing. Um, I think you need it on the rocks and I think you need it on the fish myself. And, um, I would just do a little bit of glazing with glazing medium and color. And, um, Let's play a little bit with the with the with the eyes. Let's see, that's too much. Let's see. Um, I think I just like a little more color on this face too. Okay, just saying. I think you. I just. I think you need some more detail on this fish. Okay. Just something like that, just something a little bit more in the front. So now he looks different than the one in the back, right? I think that's important. And then I would just, um, I think I'd do this. I want to see some glazing 
on the rocks back here. I don't see. I don't think we're seeing enough of the glazing on the on these rocks. Almost want to glaze a little bit under the fish too. Just a little more, right? Just to give it a little depth. Same here. Glaze a little bit on this fish. Now, now let's direct the light. Now we've got a more balanced picture. You see what I mean? So now you've got the little bit of glazing here on the bottom of this fish. And you've got that. Okay. Now what you can do is you can always, after you glaze, you can come back and you can you can erase a couple of the light areas. See like this, where the light's coming. Rather than paint it in, just sort of erase it. Anyway, I do something like that, but I just feel like you just you just need to take this a little bit further, but you've done a wonderful job, and I'm sure your husband will love this. Let me just move this out of the way. And just even this, doing this much. Uh, let's copy this. And uh, come on over here. All right, so I want to show you what happens if you just take this a step further and do a little bit of glazing. See what a difference that would make. Okay, see, now that the, your, your main fish has got a little bit more contrast on him, then they're not painted the same. And, um, and you've got, you know, got a bit of glazing. Also, the other thing, I would avoid this straight line. You've got a straight line right here. I'd avoid that. Put, you know, just change that up a little bit. Those are my thoughts, but good job on that. Thanks for all the wonderful references. I hope you understand and can see the value of personal art coaching and would consider joining us at Acrylic Painting with GingerCook.com. And we're back. All right. But now we're going to put in this sort of faded background. Yes and yes. What kind of background? A faded background. Faded you see background. how it's just all kind of, it's implied? Yes. All right. So let's take a little bit of this greenery here. Kind of yellow with a little bit of um, raw umber in it. And um, a little bit of, um, let's see, let's put a little bit of burnt sand in that. Well, that's way too much paint. So I'm going to see if I like my color. Yeah. If I kind of mix it, I like that. So I'm going to come up here like, well, let's see, what do I got here? I'm going to come up here like this and suggest there's some trees kind of growing next to here like that. Okay, something like that. Maybe over here a little bit too. We'll put some of these. Then let's come up with zinc white and kind of a cad red, red color and zinc white. And uh, let's paint some orange. Let's just suggest some orange trees in here. Kind of like that. We're just keeping it real loose. Okay. Make that a little bit redder. Okay, a little bit of burnt sienna in that. Okay, we're going to say that there's some, the fall foliage is on fire here. And, uh, I'm going to leave some of the um, the sky showing, peeking through our bushes and trees. I think kind of out of focus is what we're going for here. No leaves or anything. We're just painting in blocks of color. Yes and yes. Maybe something up here like that too. And then something darker up here, a little bit of raw umber. And uh, maybe something darker this way. And uh, now I still want to make a vignette, so I don't know how much of this I'm going to leave. So I'm just painting this in now because I can, but I, like I say, I don't know how much of this I'm going to leave. Um, 
Well, something kind of bright orange right next to this. There's some places where there is some kind of bright colors. And um, and again, a lot of this will be covered up with the um, trees and stuff, right? So let's put some a little bit of burnt sienna and zinc white. I want to suggest there might be a tree, and using the just the angle part of my brush now, maybe just that might suggest there might be a tree up there. And that's so much darker than I want. So I can't do anything about that, but I can add some more white to that and tap that in. Okay. Because I really don't want anything that dark up here at all. I just want to suggest there's some trees up here. Something a little bit, you know, like that. Okay. I want something light here. Now, this is where we've been using the same palette for, for like three weeks, four weeks. So this is just all the Salvador paints. This is one of their lighter yellows. And um, we want to apply fall, right? Like so, just imply that there's some fall back here. And um, I'm gonna go a little bit deeper into the colors back up in here a little bit more. I'm not gonna see a lot of this. I just have to tell you that a lot of this we're just not gonna see. So while that's drying, I'm gonna take a smaller brush and uh, suggest some um, shingles on the roof by just taking this same kind of light color here, just a little bit of the zinc white and burnt sienna. I'm going to come up here like this. Looks very much like a shingle. Yeah, doesn't it? Let's see, let's just move you because you're in the way. Okay, so we got to reload the brush. Okay. Let's do the same thing with that one. Okay, so we got some shingles on. That's pretty easy, right? Now let's do the same thing with this um uh with the with the wall of the barn here. Let's just pull some brush strokes. There's hardly any paint left on here. Like that. We can do that. A little bit here like that. Pull some paint down. Well, let's come back over here with a little bit of orange and say here's some orange color that we're going to pull down. And now in this barn here, I want it lighter. So I'm going to take some titanium white here and um, imply that the barn is uh, lighter. And uh, as opposed to um, the zinc, which is more transparent. OK, so we just you know, we take, we laugh about that when we tell you that uh, that all it's all about layering, but we're not kidding. It absolutely is all about layering and let, letting some of these other kind of funny, funky colors show up. You know, you want the something. And then we'll come back and, you know, add some highlights to it. But there's a very dark... Um, this is a very dark board right here, right there. This is pretty dark, and this is dark right here. Okay. And we know that it's dark under these eaves just a little bit. 
Okay. And it's going to be dark around our um, water wheel here. All right. Uh, there's going to be some splash up. There's always splash up on a building. So let's see what have we got here. All right, we'll play with that a little bit more when it dries. If you keep going over stuff uh, when it's still wet, you end up with everything being one color, which is not what you want. Do you see how I'm kind of layering this in and then pulling it down like that? Kind of the peak, there you go. And that's what these bristle on brushes are so great for is that you can really get some, some nice thin lines. There you go. Now, let's see, we know we want it lighter up here, too. And uh, it would be a little easier with a smaller brush. Um, I think that was the one that went toppling on the table, but I can use this one. Okay, here's a little bright, bright one, crystal on bright brush. And I need it to do... There we go, just a little bit lighter. Amazing what a little bit of light will do. And then sometimes you can take some white, and add a tiny bit of yellow to it. Just in what, what you've done is you've warmed it up a bit. So it's just a bit brighter than if you hadn't done that. You've got one side, you've got a lot of white in the picture and you want one side to look a little bit brighter. Add a bit of yellow to it, okay? And uh, even along here, I just want this to be lighter right here. There we go. All right, so now the water wheel is kind of a kind of an orange color here. This is the water wheel. We got too much paint on the brush, so let's put some white with that. A little burnt sienna. Now, we know we want this to be rounder here, so let's fix that right now. Let's fix this right now. We can creep in on this one now. Make that a bit, it's almost, it's a horseshoe shape, but it's more square than what I've got it here like that. All right. So then what you want to do, while this dries, that's what we want to do here is just suggest that there's something there and I can just put a few marks that are parallel to the top and bottom of the canvas. Don't get them at an angle. And I'm using burnt umber and ultramarine blue and I want, I want this darker here down toward the bottom. But that again, that should be drying. Okay. Just flatten this on top. Okay, so there's the water wheel. There you go. That's sort of a start with it anyway, yeah? So that's kind of, to me, this is really fun because um, um, now what I'm going to do is put a few more colors. Here's some green and light blue, and I want titanium white, and I want a little bit of this green color in there. I'm going to add a touch of raw umber to it. Just tone it down just a bit. Okay, not probably more than I wanted to. I want it too gray. A little tiny bit of yellow with that. Okay. There you go. So it's this color in here. And I want a little bit of this color up in the sky next to this um, barn right here. I don't want to talk too much about it, but I want a little bit of this color in here. And I'm going to put a little bit of this dark color next to this roof like that. And then I want a little bit of white and yellow. Kind of like, almost like this up here. Just, a, just some, just want to drag in some colors in here. 
suggesting there might be some, some trees that we're not talking about. Just barely touching it. Okay. All right. So far, so good. You're going, yeah, I don't know, Ginger. Just so far, maybe, but. Uh, <laughs> not uh, real sure. I'm not sure. I know that we're going to um, put a little of this darker color on this. Let's do this on the on the roof here. And let's there we go. I'm starting to layer some colors on here. Yeah. Okay. So I want to put some trees in. And um and how I'm going to do that is I'm going to make some sky color and I'm going to paint what's called painting the negative space. And painting this, don't paint the tree, paint the, the space next to it. Now, some of you may find that easier if you chalk them in. Did you fix my pencil sharpener? No, so you can get to it. Not well, gosh, John. You have a dozen sharpened pencils. Well, over I know, there. but I mean, why would you fix it and not bring it back? Because I'm still yeah. testing it. Oh, well, I could have been the test person. Yeah, then when it doesn't work, you get all angry and yell and scream at it and rant and rave and carry on like a mad woman. That sounds like something I'd do, really. No. I'm wondering about you sometimes. You think I might do that? No. All right. Hey, Mark would like to know, what is your favorite subject to paint? Um, you know, I don't have a favorite subject. Oh, though. come on. I What's the one thing you just can't? I can think of a couple things. That what you... do you think well, my favorite subject is? Horse. I like horses. Do a lot of putty cats. I like penny cats. Animals. Maybe animals. I don't know. Fall. No, you're right. She didn't have a favorite. Mark, sorry. <laughs> Just about anything that she wants to paint, she paints. No real one favorite. No, we're not. But along the same line, Terry would like to know, what are you looking for when you are selecting a subject to paint? Um, it depends whether it's for the Academy or myself. If I'm doing it for myself, what, what am I going to do with the picture? Is it something I want to put in my house? Or Is it something I'm going to teach? Is it for YouTube? Um, do I have to um, um, uh, simplify it because it's for YouTube and make it more teachable? Is it going to be something people can do? Is it something I might like to paint, um, but I don't think anybody else would, so that I don't do it? Um, there's so many factors involved in stuff like this, as far as uh, you know what we paint and why we paint it. There's no one reason. A, a, you know, one cookie lesson is going to be different what I would pick than a two cookie, and um, I think that's the, the the key here is that what are we using it for? Like for instance, if you were painting. That's a good example, because if you were painting for, say, um, uh, uh, you wanted to sell the painting, you wanted to have a little online store and sell the painting, then what you would want to do is go to your local uh, Bed Bath & Beyond or J.C. Penney's or one of your furniture stores. You know, John, I'm going to have to dry that. Everything's going green on me which I don't want. Let me just take a second and dry. Just pause the whole video. You don't have to do anything. Just give me a second to dry. That's what we do. That's what we've been doing. We'll be right back. Well, you guys, I don't think I can look at another commercial about how to unstop the toilet or um, maybe you two can learn to draw. That You know, we, we have to have those in our video in order to kind of cover some costs. But I thought it would be fun as long as we were doing it to put a commercial in for ourselves. So here's the here's the commercial from me to you. I want you to have a wonderful day. I want you to be the artist you can be. I want you to get up in the morning and say, today's the day I'm going to be happier than I was yesterday. This is my commercial in wishing you the bestest, happiest day of your life. And art hugs from John and I. Okay, let's try this again. All right, we're back. I'm going to try that again because I want this lighter. Yeah. 
think I want a different brush. Mm. I want something I can make tiny little leaves with. Here's a little dagger brush to make tiny little leaves with. Or rather little branches. Okay, I got that tree. I want one back here that uh, I want to imply that there's a couple of these back here. You know what? I'll, the trick for this is I'll have to put some foliage around them um, to um, make that work. We've got some of these little light trees back here, and then probably um, you can always skinny them up if you need to. Um, just suggesting some, not too much, just suggesting that there's some trees here. And a little bit of the foliage. Maybe on some of them. I think I'd make that one skinnier. Okay, so all right, that's good. So far, so good, yes and yes. So what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to get, I've got a, you know, I, I want all those background colors. And um so like in here, I want a light background color. Because I've got a tree here that's gonna cover most of that. All right, so what else do I got? I know that I want, um, I know that I want a light line like that. Okay, so far so good, yes. And then we want, we want some boards back here. We don't want that color. Want some boards back here, implying some wood boards that there maybe is something inside the shed here like that. And um, okay, and I'll cut to darken those because they're too bright. So we'll just come up here like this with something dark. Just, just, just kind of show something inside there like, like that. All right, and how about this? And now don't do too much with the with the with this wheel here. Just don't get too carried away. Just a few lines ought to do it. This ought to be a little bit lighter right here, maybe a little oranger right there on the wheel. Got a little bit of white with this. Okay, with this lighter. With this lighter here. So constantly evaluating what's light and what isn't. Okay. And um I think as I you're think, going. As I'm going, as I'm going, I'm just gonna say there's a beam along here. Okay. So it's just don't need a lot of detail because again, this is all gonna be sort of uh skewed by uh, trees and stuff, and uh, so you're not going to see most of this, but um, you know, which again, it's all about layers and breaking up layers, and uh, even that over here, too, just breaking up some of this over here. And I know that, for instance, I know something with a little bit of something light right there. We had a little of that blue color, but we're kind of pushing it back a little bit there, but not so much. And then there's sort of this 
this orange, kind of a neat orange bush right here. And a bit of yellow. That, that, that's probably brighter than I want, but uh, it can be there for now. I'll we'll put a little bit of dark behind it. Okay, I'm going to darken up the bank here. Just take a little bit of the dark brown color. Darken up that bank. So again, again, all I'm doing, and I know it could look sometimes it must seem like I don't understand what she just did. What she just did was um, uh, add some, just another layer of color. Because that's what you're doing. You're just adding another layer of color to it. And that's what's so cool. So now uh, we know that, for instance, from my photograph that there's a reference photo that this this was pretty because there was this beautiful orange. Take some of that light yellow too. There was this beautiful orange color coming out this way, reflecting in the water. And kind of all along this bank here. There's this beautiful orange color. Came this way. And even back this way, it was there's a little bit of um, reflections in the water. And uh, just even in the browns. So let's just take a little bit of that burnt um uh, burnt um burnt sienna and uh, uh, a little bit of zinc white it just suggests that there's some color in this pond here. We're going this way with, and all along here, there's a little bit on the bank. Okay. And then I know from the photo, see that this is all lighter up in here. So I can take another layer of something and put it up here and lighten this up. Oh, I could have a little bit of green with it too, a little touch of green with that. Not too much, but just suggest kind of a yellow green. We're going to suggest this is lighter here like that. And just give it another coat of something. Okay, and now that's brighter than I want. But on the other hand, I don't hate it yet. So I'm going to dry it and then I'm going to go over it with some gold because I can't do anything with that. Okay. And we'll be right back. Hi, you guys. Did you know that probably the first four hours of my day, four to five hours of my day, are spent at the computer doing personal art coaching to our Academy members? People send me their artwork that they've been working on, either a lesson on YouTube or it might be an Academy lesson or maybe it's a photograph that they have that they're painting a picture for a friend. And they'll send me that and then we, I will do a video and do personal customized art coaching for that individual, send it back, and we have this dialogue that's fantastic. And it's just like me sitting in your studio talking over your shoulder and saying, this is great, change this. And it really is true when I say a video is worth a thousand words. I think it's a picture's worth a thousand words. So a video must be worth a million. I think that was it. So one of the many reasons why joining the Academy of Fine Art and Acrylic Painting is of super benefit to you, and I think you should give us a try. Okay, mm -hmm. so, we'll lift you. So now we're gonna go, we're, we're out of the, when I say gold, I really mean yellow oxide or yellow ochre, because that's your gold color, all right? And that is, an, which one is it? Here it is. Here. Yellow ochre in the Salvador, okay? All right, so here we go. Take a little of that color and this is our next layer on here. Tap some of that on. Just tap it on because I want some of this other color to kind of peek underneath it. There we go. Then I want something very light right here. Ooh, too much paint on the brush. There we go. Just something real light right there. Okay. So let's do those same colors in the front here, like this, because we know that they they belong in here too. So let's just tap those in along here. This is not the brush I want for that. I want that. Uh, you want more of your tapping brush? I want one of this. I want this angle brush, actually, because I want to do an angle here like this. I want to tap in angles like this, kind of diagonal to this. So this brush is very well suited for that. That's your dagger brush. 
my little dagger brush because I can kind of tap it in this way and just imply the um, these colors in here on this bank. Who would like to know what is your song and how do you know a picture will make a good painting? Uh, what is my song? There's two questions. Um, our song. Our song. Do we have a song? Coming? What is your song, Ginger and John? Yeah, our song is We Don't Sing. Yeah. Neither one of us follow music very much, so we don't really have a song. Yeah, we don't really that, listen to just, music. We, listen we would to fail the show name that too. Oh. We I, I couldn't name, name that tune if you played the whole thing. Played the whole thing. I'd be sitting there. We when we're cruising, we just ignore those shows. Yeah. We just go on, walk by. And uh, don't even look at them. We just uh, we admire people that can do it, but that is not us. No. In fact, if they're just playing music, we leave. <laughs> just, <laughs> just yes and yes. Yeah. And then what the follow up was, how do you know a picture will make a good painting? Well, you know, that that's 50 that's a... years of painting, darling. <laughs> it's not something I can tell you in a sentence. But it's studying painting design and uh, studying the old masters and seeing what, um, you, you know. You learn was a, a lot from the masters. You learn so much from that. If you would just study the old masters and ask yourself, what made this painting work? Um, I think you'd be shocked. Now, some of them, the old masters, I ask, why is this so good? And some of them I struggle with. They yeah. just don't make sense to me. Sometimes they came up with ways. It's like rap music will be considered a form of music 100 years from now because nobody thought of it before. Right. And I mean, there's going to be a little bit of that, kind of almost like modern day poetry. And even if you don't like the words. Okay, so lighten up the roof there. See, this is the layer two, yes? Jeannie Wilson would like to know, do you have a studio studio in your home or is it a standalone building? We have Ooh, a, that's a tough question. Well, it is in our home. But it's a standalone building. Yes, yeah, a standalone building over a three-car garage. And then we have three other, we have a six-bedroom house, and so we probably have four of the bedrooms devoted to our art stuff. Four? Let's see. We have One, two, two, we have a, two, two, we have a guest yeah, we room. Have at least four. At least four. <laughs> at least four of them are being used. Okay, yeah. Yeah, at least four. So now you see where we've done that with the. I want to put some of this lighter blue color, and I didn't really get enough of that color in, and I want to see a little bit of that. And the garage is detached from the house, but it has a walk path. You know, it's attached, attached type thing. There's a way to get to it without going outside. Yeah. Absolutely is. You don't so, want to get caught in the snowstorms. Yeah. You know what we don't have any more of is ultramarine blue. We've cut about out of that. I didn't take it's very it. Very hard to, well, you know, we kind of use that up. It's very hard to put it over here because it's very nice when you don't want black. Burnt umber and ultramarine blue make a very nice dark color. Give you a blue black. Yeah. I want the inside of that dark right there, in that windmill, watermill. Okay, I think there was a little house right there, a little window. Put that in right there. Oh, here's a fun question from Cheryl. Okay. What is your, John and Ginger, typical day from waking up through to bedtime when you're not making a tutorial or traveling? Not making a tutorial to traveling. We don't have a typical day. Sometimes we go swimming if we can... You know, if it's the right time of year, because we have a, we spent some time last year having a company come in, and my pool was like thirty years old, and they updated it. Got it and, all fixed uh, up. So now we can, um, we can even heat it, and it's just not but, too much. Okay, money. so if we're not doing a tutorial or traveling, um, I'll still be working on the website, and you'll still be doing packs or designing the next lesson. Yeah. So we're not actually painting. So that's kind of a trick question. Yeah, we're not trying to paint. We're basically always doing something for the business twenty four seven. And not, sometimes in the evening, you'll you'll catch me watching a little TV show where I'll um um let's see, I want a little bit of this color up here now in my woods. 
bird should be able to fly through your trees. You've heard me say that, yes and yes. Yeah, gotta take care of the birdies. Okay, see? There we go. Neat, hi. Now, um, what goes here is this really kind of neat tree. And um, almost like a weeping willow. It looks like to me that that's kind of what it is. Oh, let me bring it up and take a quick peek at it. And John's going to look at the original, tell you if he thinks it is. But I think it is. And it's going to come up like this. That is not a weeping willow, my queen. No? Nope. Matter of fact, it looks like there's some kind of fruit on it. Can't be in the fall. Okay. Well, this is not really a fall painting. Well, it is. It's late fall, early fall. But it's not a weeping willow. But it's your tree, and if you want to put a weeping willow, I will let you do so. Oh, that's nice of you. All right, you know, team player. I want some crooked branches coming up this way. Remember, branches um, all have a tendency to be crookedy for one. Be crookedy, but they, they get thinner as they go out, right? So Typically, wanna, they do. You want to have that, right? You want that. want to have that experience with your tree. And um, I might put a few here. I'm not going to connect them to anything. They'll be part of the, I can connect them here, I guess. All right, so I want to put um, a tree there, which I've started with. But if I want to put the foliage on, that trunk has to dry. You guys can see that, right? I can see that. And the that. tree has to come a little bit higher than the house. So it's got on the top, and it's got to be right about there, higher than this house. A little higher than the mill. The mill, well, the building. All right, so let's dry the tree, and then we can put the foliage. Yes and yes? Yes and yes, and we'll be right back. Hi, this is Ginger Cook, and this is my quintessential color mixing journal. Did you know learning how to mix colors it's the key to every artist's journey, regardless of medium. Today I want to share with you not only the 12 awesome reasons to own this quintessential color mixing journal tutorial that has over 13 hours of video content, but also three additional must-do things to avoid muddy, dull, or lackluster paintings, even after you've learned to mix the right color. But why a color mixing journal? Why might you need it? Mixing color for artists is the number one problem they face when learning to paint. And as a professional artist and teacher for over 50 years, I promise you this is true. And I'm going to show you the 12 paint colors that you need to own in acrylics plus titanium white to mix nearly every color. Not only will you save hundreds of dollars, either from buying the wrong or unnecessary tubes of paint, or from throwing out ruined color mixes, or paints, or even paintings because you couldn't get the right color correct and you got frustrated. These videos in the journal and explain why and how simple it is to create your own journal, how to build your own journal and create a color map and color memory in your brain. Because you have to do it yourself. Words don't teach, but action does. This is one of the reasons you, you absolutely need to take the time to make the journal and keep adding to it. We're going to show you how to use the grayscale correctly and not to overmix colors or end up with a pile of unused paint when you need it, just a dab of color on your canvas. When you learn how to use these 12 must-have acrylic colors, and white. We're going to also explain which blacks to own because basically blacks for the most part kill your colors. They actually make them muddy and awful. But know when and when is the right time to use black when you want to use black in a painting and which colors it's most effective to use with. 
we're going to show you not only how to uh, avoid using black, but how to mix grays without using black and the different colors and shades of grays you can have. We're going to talk about the color wheel when mixing colors. Not only just talk about complementary colors, but the importance of using this handy tool in, in, in shading and toning and brightening up colors. What is glazing? Why should you use it? What colors can be glazed? What colors can you glaze over? There's a whole video just on that. Why professional acrylic brands of paint? Why do they save you money? And how oversaturation of water can ruin your paintings with less expensive paints and are more likely to separate off the canvas. Oftentimes, student-grade paints we have found will cost you more money in the long run. Not only are we going to go through the top brand of acrylic paints found in the United States, but I'm going to show you the ones that I personally use as a professional artist. But if you live in another country, don't worry. If um, the, This is why you're making the journal yourself with the paints that you use. It doesn't matter what I use. We've got to make, make it where you can use your paints. We're going to show you why this is a must-have journal for not only the professional artist, but even a beginning artist can achieve these same results. And now for the three must-do things to keep your colors clean and pure. It's still possible to get muddy colors in your paintings, even after mixing the correct colors on a palette. So here are the three things to avoid for getting the brightest and best color results on your paintings. Never paint wet complementary color over its complement. For example, red and green are complementary colors, so you would not want to paint red flowers over wet green leaves. So it's very important to dry between layers and use a hair dryer whenever possible. Synthetic paintbrushes is what we use for acrylic paints. Hold a bit of color even after rinsing them in water. So again, it's important to clean your brushes thoroughly when uh, mixing a color and its complementary color back and forth, back to back. For example, if you were painting a light blue ocean and had, a, and had an orange boat, you would want to remove all traces of the blue from your paintbrush before painting the orange color with the same brush on the canvas. Or better yet, grab another brush because it, it often takes soap to clean strong pigmented acrylic colors like purple, red, or phthalo blue and totally remove all traces of color. So again, this color mixing journal is a series of videos where you get the journal and make it yourself. And one of the things that we want to emphasize, we can't stress this enough, is that this is a journal that keeps on giving because as we add more videos to help you mix colors, you will, once you buy the journal, you'll always have access to the newest additions that we make to our journal. And it's constantly expanding. And as you paint, your journal will be expanding because we're going to show you how you can use your, this journal in your everyday painting experience to make painting so much fun and easier. So whether you're a professional artist and you want to take the angst out of color mixing or not over by colors or where you're just starting out, this is where you want to start with our quintessential color mixing series of videos on how to create your own color mixing journal and have the happiest time painting ever. You notice that we lighten the water before we put the tree in too. Just want to mention that, right? And um, that's rather clever of you to do. I'm going to start with some olive green. Uh, kind of a dark olive green. Ultramarine blue and yellow make a very nice olive green. And then I'll put a little bit of uh, orange in it just to kind of make it a little bit dark. There you go. So that's my darker color here. And I'm going to come around like this using brush strokes going down like this. And then I'm going to give a little space on the top, and I want to come over here with this, and everything's kind of tipping down. It's getting a little wider as it goes out into the pond. 
And I think I'm turning it less, looking less olive here. Let's get more, put a little dark in here like this. Darken this up a little bit here. And then put a little bit of orange here. There's almost some orange here like this coming this way. It's olive green. And you're just trying to decide what's tree. And it's coming down like this and it just goes behind. I like that. It's a little wider as we go down. Put this up here like that. And then maybe there's something going over here like that. Okay. So I've got sort of a nice, and I could give it, you know, I've done a little pruning with it, which is okay. And I've got to take some lighter yellow now. And I'm going to come across the tree, top the tree like that. Over the house, this is the top of it. And I'm just saying the light's hitting it from, kind of from the top. It's a flat light day, kind of on the outside here. And I don't want that color, so I'll rinse the brush. And this this angle brush is this, this dagger brush. What is this? A dagger brush is perfect for this because it allows you to make these brush strokes sort of the top, the top of the letter M. Ooh, it's I was going to see a comma or apostrophe. Like maybe a comma too, yeah, maybe, huh? Comma, could be that too. Whatever. All good choices. Yeah, so we're just maybe putting something in front of this like that. Okay, so we're coming in front, and then we'll just do our next layer of light yellow, which is where? Okay, some light yellow right here. And I know I want something up here on the very top that's very light. And I may have to dry it to get that. We'll see. Unless you're doing the tap and goes. Yeah, so we want to kind of paint that in there. Maybe mix that with some cat yellow medium. And, uh, Here's an interesting question I've never heard before. Can we answer the other one? Uh, the other one was our music one, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. We oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. What's your song? And how do you know what makes a good painting? Yeah. You Years just, of uh, experience. It's just a, I mean, we, even after she works on one that she thinks will be a good painting, it never sees the, the light yeah, of day. You never see it because it just, I'm it sorry, just make it, it just didn't, it didn't and make it. And that's when you have to realize not everything makes it and you just, you, you, you just and, and very rarely do one. I tell people to start over, but sometimes you just have to. Or actually just go in a totally different direction. So the question is from Carol, if you could go back in time, what artist would you like to come back at? What would you like to be? Who would you like to be? I don't know. Um, probably Picasso, because he made millions of dollars. He went through women like um, cottage cheese. You know, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Like well, cookies, these maybe. are all very strange reasons for picking somebody. I'm just going out on a limb on that one. <laughs> he, he was a very good artist. He had a good life. I don't know. Not many artists had a good life. Most now, starving if, I could come, if I could go back in time, the better question would be if I could go back in time and look over the shoulder and just visit a few artists and see what they oh, were no, doing. Oh, no, wait. We studio. have that question. Wait, wait, wait. Wait. Ah, from Martine McFarlane, what what are your, and there's a two, two questions here, what are your current influences in art and have these changed over your career? And if you could go ask a artist from the past any question, who would it be and what would you ask? Oh, those are good questions. Yeah. All right, so has your current influences in art, have they changed? My current? No, I don't think so. I don't I, think I so think either. I, still, I think that they're still the same. Because I'm, a, I'm a, what you'd call a colorist. And um, so... Uh, I'll take a little yellow here. Right there. I'm what you call a colorist. And a colorist is somebody that... Um, Brings out you all know, the colors just, you know, in the world. just you know, is is you know, focus more on 
you know, doesn't do like black and white studies and then paint the shadows just the way they were. They, it's more painting from nature. So um, um, it's interesting. There was a, a, an artist in Texas who was, I met her one time. She passed away a few years ago. Her name was Lily Dahl. She was an oil painting artist, a wonderful portrait painter. And um, I would have liked to have attended even one of her workshops, I think, because I thought she had a different approach to things, and particularly for portraits, even though I don't do oil. I think I you know, would have liked that person. It was very good. And you can still buy some of her videos today. Um, it's a German name, so it's not spelled Lily Dahl, D-O-L-L-C-A-H-L, I think. And she's got the video I would tell you to get was the one on setting up a still life light and color and stuff, because that was a very informative video. Okay, so this is all behind here. See how this is coming together? Aren't you surprised? This <laughs> Not kinda... really. I see you do it week after week. Yeah, but isn't it fun how it's all coming together, you guys? Yeah, I think it is. I'm always mesmerized. And it's just, you know. Um... Okay, so if you could go back in time. Is that the person you asked? No, that I mean, if I could go back in time, I would have. I'd like to have wished because when I was texted, I wish I had just taken one of her workshops because I think they would have been interesting. Okay, let's go further back then. So, if we were going to go further back than that, okay. Um, I I'm I'm like um, uh, Monet. I think was uh, probably one of my favorite artists. And um, um, and I, I really I really liked what he painted. So you'd like to sit down and have a cup of coffee with him and discuss yeah, art. Just, just talk with me, right? Yeah. Because I thought I guess that he was um, he was the guy that I thought really a little bit more light up there. In case anybody noticed what we did here, yeah, he was a he was a uh, to me he was a really good artist and um, uh. And I think I would have just liked to sit in the studio of some of these other guys and just watch them paint. One of the things we let you do when you see us paint is you're actually sitting there watching us paint. So rare, do you understand? That's, the, that's such a rare gift technology has given everybody. Really something. To be able to just sit and watch somebody else paint and really kind of try to understand what they're doing and why they're doing it. And Now, we even take it a step Further, you can ask questions of the artist. Yeah, as they paint, right? So here's this uh, mill coming in, and you can see here that what I need to have happen here is um, I can take a little light orange and yellow. I mean something a little brighter back here, and even here, just a little bit brighter. There we go. See? Isn't that fun? Just it's amazing what you can do when you. There you to go. push a little mind to it. Just, you know, everything's lights and darks, and that sort of, that has this sort of almost luscious, velvety feel to it, doesn't it? These colors, when you start putting them in, and this is a, you know, a little bit of orange in this a pathway here, like that, the grass. It's, uh, uh, it's the perfect brush for that. Kind of scribbling it on. Okay, and then we're going to do... A little bit more of the kind of maybe a little bit more. Let's see, what have I got here? Oh, oh yeah, something light. Let's do that. I say, let's I say, oh, you guys, let's do something light, like right here in the front of this. Uh, right here, let's lighten that up right there on the bank, like, like that. Carol Perrara, uh -huh. I would like to know, my question is, I know you are the queen of color, but who gave you that name? Ha ha. Ha 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 ha. John did. I did. I'm guilty. She was my queen, and she's the queen of color. No, I'll tell you what. I've always been known for color. That's what I'm known for. And, known um, for color, and I just put the queen part with it, because... She's my it's queen. Just, I've been, you know, probably, probably very famous for color. Okay. 
Yeah, this is fun, you guys. I'm enjoying this a lot, right? Just it's looking good. Looking and we get really it's good. coming together. I mean, you can kind of see here, like, see, I mean, it's really co coming together a lot. I mean, that kind of muddy and stuff kind of fixed that up a little bit, but you know, it's coming together. Yes and yes. You're seeing the colors that are supposed to be there. You know what? What the computer does was give me an idea of where I want to go. You break the trunk up there a little bit. You know, you've got that tree. And uh, then what I liked in this picture was this tree, this tree here. So it's kind I, of like a ghosty tree. Yeah, I just I really like that tree, and it had all these fun little branches that were coming down. And, uh, you know, you wouldn't necessarily see them all, but uh, let's see, I want something a little bit lighter here. Let's make something, let's make this one. We got something kind of coming over this way. Make that one wider. You have to dry that to get it lighter, but there you go. You need it lighter right here. It's not going to do it. Because we still have to put the vignette stuff so I don't get too carried away, but. Um, Okay. And then, you know, if you get a branch that's too big, what do you do, right? How do you skinny it up? You just put another color next to it. If you can't, um, I think it's real easy. You just put another color next to it. Okay. And then this is sort of, this forked right here again, like at the top. Let's put the little bit next to it, another color next to it, dark brown. We'll take that one out. Don't like that branch. Okay. That's the wonderful thing about acrylics. Is boy, you do this in watercolor. There's no taking anything out. You can maybe erase, but it's hard. And this you can just change your mind and say, okay, I want to do this now. Okay. You, you've got such a leeway to, to paint stuff. And um, I can't have that light light tree going up here without some other trees in the background. So I'm gonna just suggest some. You yeah, have just stand alone. Yeah, okay. Maybe too long. They, they just, I've got to imply that there's some others here that are coming up. Okay, like that, something like that. We've got some over here on this side, and uh, we'll put some more. They kind of disappeared on me, but I've got, I've got. I'm saying that there's some over here too. Some of these trees. All right, let's just forget that for a minute and. Um, Come back to our roof on the barn again. Next layer. You can just see it just wasn't light enough. We thought we had it lighter, but in the picture it's almost white. Now look, you see how that paints right there? You, just you can't down. do anything with that. You've got to get you've got to get rid of that. You've got to pick it up. And um, there we go. You have to you have to pick that up. You just can't leave it. Yeah. Goofy Pest would like to know, how many children do you have combined, and did any, aside from Cinnamon, inherit the art genes as well? Um, we have two. I have one, and she has one. Yeah, we each have one. We have one boy and one girl. Wow, well, the, perfect, the perfect thing. Yeah, there you go. Charlie's more into gaming than art. Yeah, yeah. Charlie likes gaming, but he helps John with the... With the um... He does the website. He does the website, which is extremely helpful. And uh, he does that, so that's nice. So he's more technical. He gets technical from his father and art. Cinnamon gets the art. Cinnamon, yeah, so the, uh, the artist. Though, believe it or not, Cinnamon's husband, John Cooney, is a very good artist. Yeah, uh, when he was in high school, he painted some really good stuff. But the problem, 
And the same with John. John is, you know, extremely good photographer, and he, and I think uh, you will discover he's a very good artist too. And he hasn't had a, he hasn't had the experience uh, to be painting as much as he'd like because he does all this. But uh, like I say, hopefully, in these next couple of weeks, these past weeks, he will meet when this is aired. He will have had a chance to do a little bit of painting. One would always hope that, yes, John? That's the plan. That's the plan, right? A little bit of purple here. Hope Just to have some this, intense training. So honestly, that's when you see we're, we're not too bad so far, right? We haven't even done the fence yet, but we can do the fence next. And uh, that's the next plan. And because uh, I feel like we can do that. So we need a burnt umber, ultramarine blue. Um, And you know, maybe a little bit of this red color. All right, so we're gonna start with the, this fence right up here like this. Almost a dark and I noticed color. you didn't draw the fence all the way around. No, I haven't, well, because I, I couldn't do the- the, um, the water. The water first, which is why I didn't put the fence in all the way around. That's why I, I had thought. to do the water, the water first. Here, this is going to come down like this. This is an interesting, it's kind of a double fence here. So we might as well just put it in here like that. Easier to build it like that. And um, you got to keep the roof and the raft out. You know, we'll see. Let's get the, and um, let's see. We know we've got a, that one's there. This one's more, this fence is more straight up and down here like that. Okay. And, uh, We've got some over here. I haven't decided how much of this we're going to put, right? I guess we'll say that one's there and this one's here. A little bit taller. All right, I'm going to dry that. Okay. All right. All right, yeah. So, um, what we need is sort of a greenish color. Um, we want to say that there's a, this fence is kind of, Kind of green looking. It's got over the dark. We'll leave some dark, but it's kind of it's got more of a green cast to it. That'd be moss. Yeah. So you're just gonna tone. It's there, right? But we're toning that back a little bit. And um, uh, I want a little bit of the kind of white and orange color. A little bit of that color up here too on it. Let's see if we can't get a little bit more of that color up in there. Both the white and orange. Let's just do a little bit of this up here like that. Not too much, but just imply that there's a little bit of that, right? Now, now what we have to decide is how much is going underneath the fence, because you've got you're gonna we're gonna say that the grass is kind of growing around it like this, these fence posts. Yeah. And uh, there might be some kind of shadowy colors like that. But we're just kind of even those off a little bit. And the trick is, is that I want this sort of these sort of green logs here going across. Let's see, I'm going to paint those a little darker. Put some red with it. You know, put red with green, it kind of grays it really quick. There we go. I want these sort of moss green logs here coming in here like that. They're resting in between these. Okay, and this one's coming this way. Coming down like that. Okay, so um, this fence post is just, we're not going to talk about this one too much, but there it is, right? This is fun fence there. And if you look, the fence goes all the way across the pond. And, um, I'm, I'm thinking that I'm just going to put a log down here like that and just sort of stop the fence post right about there. Um, you want to block your gorgeous water? I don't want to block my water. Just say that this is. This is where it ended, right about there. Just, you know, because that's that we can still have. And then I need something pretty light on top of the fence. 
Uh, this yellow. Okay, so this is sort of, there we go. Again, not talking too much about it, just maybe a little bit of light here. And uh, uh, this has got to go through here. Let's see, what do we want to happen here? This has got to go through this one. Okay. We're disappearing here. This is our darker side. I'm mumbling to myself, you guys. This is what I do when I think about stuff. Okay, you got to go through here. You're dark here. You're dark there. Okay, so there's that fence right there. And um, this fence here is kind of like, it's kind of flat on the top. So I can do something like that. Let's just make the... Well, see, I had water on the brush when I rinsed it, so nothing is happening. So I'm just going to lighten the top of that fence, fence post right there. And I'm going to dry this one more time. Okay. Okay. Drying. Back, back. You know, when John and I first got together and became business partners uh, five years ago, and he and his wife were living in Michigan, and I was living in, in Houston, Texas. And through very sad circumstances, his wife passed away not too long after that. And in her memory, because she was such a generous person, Karen was such a generous person, we started a foundation in our art academy when we got that going. And it's called the Karen Little um, Scholarship Fund. And when you donate to that, you help other artists uh, join the academy for a week, a month, six months, a year, and give them a chance for an art education that might change their life. You know, you can say, hand someone a, a fish they eat for a day, you know, teach them to fish, they, they eat for a lifetime. Help someone to learn to paint and really fulfill their destiny as an artist and consider contributing to the Karen Little Foundation Scholarship for artists. And guess what? For every dollar you put in, we match it in our donations to help other artists uh, prosper and really learn to paint. So I know, look at why I did that. It just totally disappeared, didn't it? The light on top, on top of this fence. Not perfectly even, but there we go. And I want something lighter up here. Okay, all right. So now what I want to do is just take some of this light yellow here and um, I want to bring this past the water. Right, a little bit like that. So I will say that that because I'm looking at my picture and that's kind of been there. So, and we're ta not talking too much about this fence. Um, you know, we got a little bit of orange under here. Uh, I'm just going to put that in there like that. Add some more of these colors. And I had a fence over here too. The, the some of this fence kind of went this way. And um, I think what I'm going to do instead is bring the green tree around. I'm just going to take this green tree and bring it over here like that on this side. And let's see how dark I can make that. I don't want to talk about this this um, over here, right? So to me, the easiest thing to do is bring this tree down like that on this side and then come up with a little bit of some highlights that would 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 work for it. So there we go, something like that. Seeing that we've got that tree over there, we're not talking too much about it. A little bit more here, maybe, right where it did, like that. Okay. Okay. So that that works pretty well. And uh, we can imply bits of tree here. And uh, maybe we'll just, instead of doing the um, um, fence, we'll just do a few little tree roots like that. That's always a good trick, you know what I mean? It's always to just put a little shadow under this tree and just suggest that there's some tree roots here. I'm going this way. 
over the road and then under here. Let's just darken this under here. That works. Yes and yes. Looking good. Yeah, so that works. Yeah, and you're going, well, you know, we haven't done a lot of premieres. So we want to make them kind of fun. I want to thank our moderators who came to the premiere and come on, come all the time for our shows. And thank you very and we much. We know who you are. Thank you. And thank you very much. And we we will write you personal notes. Okay, a little bit of the shadow here, and let's let's see, bring something here like that. There we go. Nice, right? So this painting, um, it, it's working for me pretty well like this. This is kind of where I wanted to go with it, with with more of the vin with the more of the vignette. And then I also could have done a blue vignette. You can see we could do kind of a blue vignette. But then this one, we did the blue, that seemed like maybe water here, and I didn't want to do that. This could have been pretty. And um, it might have been confusing for the viewer. Might have been confusing for the viewer. And that was really my intention is to do the vignette. But I'm kind of liking it the way it is, John. Yeah. So I, I feel don't like think I, I, don't, I don't think I want to do the vignette now, but it's good to want things, you know? And to try things and to be well, you know that's why we sketched it out first. Yeah, we we gave it some thought. We also had a see. I know that, for instance, I want something here and a little bit lighter right in here, like that, coming across here, like that. Ooh, that's pretty. And I know I want something lighter coming this way. That's pretty. I think there's just enough going on in this picture where um, we just don't need it. See what I mean? So like I can come up here like this and imply to kind of break these branches up a bit. Apply the, you know, something over here. And um so and that that way I can put this back back line here on the, the road back here, which is kind of neat right there. A little back road. Just put something light back up in here like that. And uh, in the photo, there's a, like a little fence back here. We could put that. That might be kind of cute to put, you know, just imply a little fence back there. You don't have to say too much about it. Just some back there. Two little dots. They, there's a fence. And this is a, this needs to be lighter right here. This bank. Okay, right along there next to our water well. And then there's some um, dark, um, there's the base of the house here like this. And there's some dark coming up here on the, on this part of the building. Maybe some dark bank here like that. And uh, a little bit, of, I'm still in the burnt sienna, but I've got a little bit here on the bank of our river, or a little pond. And then the trick would be, and I really like the idea that the pond keeps going. So if you took a little bit of uh, blue and white and came in here like that, you could imply that the water kept going. See what I mean? <gasps> How tricky is that, right? You're fooling the viewer. Just a little bit of this lighter blue right here. And uh, a little bit of this color on here too. So I like that color. And it's certainly like a little bit of that blue right here on the side of this road right there, like to imply that there might be something wet going on there. And if you add a little bit of gray to it, you can come up in your um, sky a bit and just add a bit of, you don't want too much, but again, I wish, I want that, that this roof much lighter than I've got it. I'm going to just kind of drag this over it like that. You'll still see the dark.
There we go. There's that lighter, lighter roof. Sure, we'd like to know, do you varnish all of your paintings? And if you do, do you use gloss, satin, or matte? Um, John, John is the one that varnishes our paintings, though I have historically always varnished my paintings, but John, why don't you answer that? Yeah, pretty much we, uh, we varnish everything we get our hands on to, if it's worthy. And most of the time it's gloss, but we will use satin and matte, depending upon the subject and what we're trying to you know, That's the final step that's going to, you know, dictate what you're trying to tell it, you know, what, what, are you, what are you expressing in your painting? Some paintings deserve glossy, some want matte, some want satin. So yep. we use them all. But yes, most of the time we do varnish. Well, all right, so let's take all these little pictures out of the way now. Just kind of say, let's just look at this all by itself and say, how did we do with this? How did we do with this? I asked the question. Oh, you did? I did. So I would say we did really well. We know we want some lighter. We did Marvy. Something lighter right here. See on this, right like that? It's almost a blue white, isn't it, right there? It's a little lighter. I'm just looking at our, um, uh, I want the contrast, you see there? I'm taking that just sort of almost also light, something lighter. I put the paint just on this side of the brush. Okay. Put a few little light lines right in there. And um, that, that was a little bit of orange on this side of the roof here. That's what I like about it. When I'm looking at my picture now, there's a little bit of orange up here on this that kind of rust orange color on here like that. Right, a lot going up there. Um, there you go. So I'm just keeping correcting the lights and the darks. Yes and yes. And uh, that's sort of a, you know, kind of a postcard uh, picture, I think. Uh, to me, anyway. Uh, maybe, you know, to me, that looks very postcardy. Very postcardy. Postcard, kind of something you might uh, postcard from the pond, right? And um, this still doesn't read as well as it could for just, uh, you know, logs or something in this house. I'm going to redo those because that doesn't, it looks like a tree instead of a log. I'm going to just let's redo those because they don't look like that. And we can do that because we're just all hanging out here, right? And uh, did we answer that question, John? I think varnish? you answered that question. Now, why don't you say what kind of brand we varnish we use? I think that's important. Oh, we use Liquitec. Liquitec varnish. All their varieties. They have a gloss, high gloss, satin, and matte. We've used them all. It can, depending upon what it needs to do. I've got a couple of videos shot on how I do it. I haven't had a chance to edit those yet, but we'll get those up yeah. in the near future. It's a pretty simple process. Okay. There's really not a reason not to do it because it does punch up the colors again and protects your painting. It does, right? It does. And uh, you, you really ought to do it. And um, the thing about it is, is that because of the way the way Liquitex works, it's not like an oil painting varnish, okay? Yeah, these are non-removable. They are acrylic based and it becomes part of the painting. Yeah. So and if you decide later you want to change the painting, you can do it because it's acrylic based. You just paint right over it and just keep and going. And then varnish over that once it's dry. Yes, I mean, you can't, it's hard to... Um, hard to mess it up. 
hard to mess that up, right? Yeah. I mean, how, how can you can't uh, see what do we got here with this tree here? I was just thinking it might be have some moss growing on the tree or something. There you go. I don't like that better. Lynn has a question for us. One, I have one for both of you. Ooh. Do you have any me time, in quotes, me time, that gives each of you the time to reflect on your lives? Sometimes when you spend 24-7 with your mate, you tend to lose yourself. I have found this since we have retired. Um, yeah, that's a good question. John is uh, leaves me usually right after dinner, and he's gone till about 4 in the morning. Uh, after he's done the dishes, he bakes dinner, does the dishes too, because he doesn't like how I put things back in the dishwasher. Oh, so he's <laughs> just, not going there. This is just so lovely. He orders the groceries, brings in all the food, right? And then he disappears around. Um, These are between eight and nine. These are between eight and nine. And then I, uh, I go into uh, our bedroom and play on the, my computer, play computer games. And uh, watch some TV sometimes, and um, listen to a book. Listen to my audio books, and I go to bed about um, uh, one in the uh, about two, one to two in the morning, and then I get up earlier than John. So then, um, so she will do her packs. Uh, start uh, on her packs before I get up. Yeah, I do. I do the packs before he gets up. And if I'm going to, you know, chat on the phone and talk to friends and stuff, I do that then. Yeah. And uh, all of that, right? So spending 24-7 together, we really don't. We each have our own times. You have to have your own time. So then, I guess, Lynn, we have our own time. Yeah, we have our own time. And we're pretty selfish with it. Yeah. And, So well, that works out well. Yeah, well, I would say that uh, when we're talking about that, I'm, the only thing I really don't like is this white line dividing the canvas up there. It looks so neat in the picture, but boy, it doesn't look so great now. This white tree right here. I think I'm gonna, you just darken it down a little bit? Yeah, I think I'm just going to push it back a little bit. I still have it, but uh, maybe put a little bit of green to back up in here. Um. Let's just break this up a bit. There, just, um, I don't want a little bit of that green color over here, too. Just a little bit, just kind of imply. It doesn't all turn fall on the same day. You know, no, it fall the, comes in stages. It does. And so I'll just break most of that up, but uh, just a little bit of that green peeking through there is nice. And, um, uh, it still kind of bothers me here. Maybe I just tone that back. That's a little better. You know what it is? It's a straight line. You have a little bit of a curve in it. Yeah, but no, but it's just a line going straight up there. Just, That's true. I don't like it. It blocks the picture. It was okay in the photo, but I don't like it. So this is the point. Somebody said, how do you know when something would make a good picture or not, right? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to leave the tree, but we're going to take some of it out. Just imply it's here. Um, and we, which we can do. We can take some of it out. And uh, just put something, you know, like that. Because it really bothered me. It just, I just didn't like that at all. And I, and just you guys, you can't have that. There, let's just bring that forward. And so if you wanted to say some of that tree was showing, if I wanted to say it was showing a little bit, I can have it showing a little bit, but not as much as it was, right? It needed to be broken up like this. Something more like that. So it just wasn't a straight line going up. That's what I didn't like about it, even though it was in the photo. Which the photographer really couldn't move the tree. Yeah, he couldn't move it. But, you know, as artists, 
And I think since we're not doing anything over here now, we can we can uh, break this up too a little bit. Just imply some other little trees back here. So uh, the same thing on this side, since we're not doing the vignette, we can imply some trees. Maybe just even some dark, darker brown ones in here like that. Don't do a whole line, just sort of. Branches are peeking through. Just, 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 just suggest that maybe that happened. And then maybe just kind of erase them. There we go. I, I think that's the trick to do is people always say, well, what can I take away and not ruin the effect? Well, I still want us to have something there kind of as a block. And the same thing with this tree here, it's just kind of going, um, you, there's a tendency where you quit following the photograph. Does that make sense? And um, that's what you want to, that's, that's where you want to get to is when you sit there and go, well, the photograph did this and that's not where I'm going with it. And the same thing here. And the photograph has this roof lighter than I've got it. I can do that, uh, but I've got to have some contrast. So maybe I still want this dark line on top of the roof anyway, right? Okay, since I want to just bring some contrast, you know, I want it to, to be darker right there. Always a little bit darker under there. Okay, I feel like that's it, John. I feel like we've got... If you want to pause it for a second and find our nine by twelve, this is one I think is worth framing, don't you think? Oh, absolutely. Why don't you find our nine by twelve frame? All uh, right, we'll be back after I go during a journey again. All I do is journeys. I think the stuffy staff could help out. Is that the painting with the uh, already in it with the I think we never got them out of the, um, um, well, that's the one that yeah, let's get that. Was that eight by ten or two by ten? I don't know why it was that eight by ten. Then I Okay. One second. All right, ready? Mm-hmm. 
Hey, look at the frame I got for you. That looks great. Don't you guys think that's nice? It just is a lovely little autumn scene. And um, and what I like about it is I can see it in the frame now, and I can see a few little things. I mean, I could do something, too, if I wanted. Always. Uh, like, for instance, if I want to lighten this up right here a little bit, we lighten up some of the sky just in a couple places. Right around this tree, maybe. There you go. And I love that we did that with the water, don't you? Yeah, I like just the way the water Just put through. a little, poke that water through that tree. And, you know, if you're not sure about your branches, you can, you know what I mean? You can, you've got some leeway with, you know, something like that. You can do a little pruning. You can do a little pruning, which is much easier to do here, right? And uh, in our, there's a little of this color too in our uh, photograph that maybe it, had rained recently. And there's a little of this lighter color in, in our picture. In here like that. And uh, just, again, like it, it might be, might have been raining. That's, that's exactly what I'm thinking. It feels like it might have, you know, been raining here. I still, you see me still trying to get this roof a little bit lighter than I had it. Yeah, huh? A cold, I mean, it's cold, cold fall day. Cold fall day. There you go. Just put a little of that color right there. And uh, let's see, I think I can exaggerate this a little bit more than I have. Because that was on, it was like that on the, uh, in the original picture, it was a little bit more of that. But I think it's pretty with the water on the road. Hmm? Yeah, huh? You guys, how neat is this? This is not, not one of my favorites. It's a little, probably a little more involved than we normally do for YouTube, but John and I, because it was premiere, we thought maybe um, you'd share this video with people and let people know how fun this is. I want to just take a second and show you um, our next um, video in the Academy, which is going to be these cats. Last week, we released in our, the Academy, we released these barns. It was all done with a palette knife, kind of it, you know, just right before fall. Everything hasn't quite turned yet, but it's starting to. You see that kind of late summer? And then you can see how these, see, even this painting would go with with this one. And you could do it. Do, this one is one you could do larger. So this is 9 by 12. What other size could they do this in, John? 1824, 1216. 1824 or 1216. No squares. No, no rectangle. Would... Don't make it a horizontal. I mean, a vertical. Yeah, it won't work. And then these two cats are the new tutorials we're releasing for this week. One will be downloadable only, and that's done with only with golden opens, all the golden open paints and how to use them. And one is done um, regular with regular acrylics. And you can see they're very similar in style. And so there's step-by-step -step videos on our Academy if you are a red or blue member. And in our video lesson library. And I think you're going to love these a lot. And when we get back, we will share with you our um, our Wave and Water uh, new release, too. But so here we go. Uh, you need to sign it. Farms. You need to oh, sign it. And we have a question with that. Krogan's What's the red slash in its signature all about? Yeah, look at this. The, the, this uh, cap came off. I didn't take it off. Well, so we didn't click it on very good, then to dry it out. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, this would bring a new one. Well, maybe I don't know where it went. I don't see it in the can. Well, we'll deal with that later. Sorry, you guys. I just, oh, um, I think I'm going to sign it a black pen right there anyway. What do you think? I think, I think you can do, do that. I think I'm going to do black right there. Uh, here we go. I, the red slash goes through my name as a sort of a trademark. The trademark, not sort of, it is a trademark. And the genesis of that was when Cinnamon and I, back in the early 2000, 2001 and 2, 
spent time in France painting, and we rented a house um, a couple of times and went over to paint. And um, when you left Paris or you left La Bastille or Carcassonne or whatever, instead of saying you're leaving the town, like you in America say you're leaving Texas or you're leaving Houston, they just put a red slash through the name of the city, and that means you've left. So this means we've left this painting now. We're done. Finish. Now, don't forget to subscribe. I'd love some likes here. I know we've been asking for you from them for you from all night, but we appreciate them anyway. And uh, we know that you want to do a few wonderful likes for us. And as I see this, I'm going to come on the outside just right here where this is, right like that. There you go. Make that water wheel stand out, though it's not running at the time. It's dormant. So Grogan's Mill, and um, I think it goes still very nicely with th this painting that we did last week of uh, your favorite couple hiking. Yes and yes. Absolutely. <laughs> and again, we could have done a vignette on this, but I, I'm thinking now that, that that was probably the way to go. Is just do the entire painting and enjoy the experience of that. All right, everybody, subscribe if you haven't. Hit that thumbs up. Leave and comments share, below. Share with everybody you know. Everybody, even people you don't know. Oh, what's the contest, John, real quick? Uh, uh, uh. Okay, so, you know, so, uh, uh. Um, I didn't write anything down here, um, my queenness. Can you go back and edit? Can I go back and edit? Oh, we haven't left yet. We haven't left it. You can edit it, right? I gotta find where. So I, and I, we're gonna do that. Do we, do we have a question of the day? Um, do you feel like? Do you have more questions about us than the ones we've answered? Are okay. there more questions? Right, and we'll we'd love to hear there. those, and we'll answer those when we get back on Monday. And we'll see you Monday. And uh, what hashtag? hashtag I think it's got to be hashtag um, Mill. Mill. M I L L. And Salvador Kit. And Salvador Kit. So if you want to win the paint, uh, include that hashtag uh, kit. If you want to, not you're not winning a painting, but you're winning a downloadable lesson. We'll tell you what that is on Monday when we get back. Some downloadable lesson. Um, that's just has, hashtag mill. I'm find my palette. Got to make sure I can read it. There we go. All right. That's it then. We did it. We were so organized. Anything else, Queen? No, we're going to say goodbye. Thanks for tuning in. Love you guys. Bye. Bye. Ginger Cook, the Queen of Color, with a blazing brush at the speed of light and a blank canvas, and a hearty yes and yes. The queen of color, Ginger Cook, and her sidekick, John Little, teach you to paint with acrylics.